Hey everyone, thank you so much for joining me here today. We are going to be doing a forgiveness flow. I feel like this one really give me strength to make it through this. Uh, forgiveness, honestly, I think is one of the toughest skills that you can work to develop. Um, it would be lovely if we could just magically forgive everyone, uh, but unfortunately, I think forgiveness is like trying to fall asleep. If you try so hard to fall asleep, what's gonna happen? You're probably gonna lie awake, right? And just like sleep, we have to do things to sort of set the wheels in motion, and then we just allow the process to take hold, and whatever's gonna happen is gonna happen, right? You turn down the lights, you take a bath, maybe you have lavender and a cup of tea, and then when you finally get into your warm, comfy bed, whatever's gonna happen is gonna happen, right? So forgiveness is kind of the same way. We're gonna do some um, movements, poses, mudras, breath practices, and that's supposed to help our emotions kind of move through us. Um, and if forgiveness happens, wonderful. If it doesn't happen, at least we're doing something that's good for our bodies, right? Um, it's important to know that when we're doing any movement or ironically on the other end of the scale, if we're doing any stillness, things might kind of bubble up from within. So you might feel worse before you feel better. You might just feel worse. You can always take a break at any point. Um, you might feel emotions kind of rise to the surface that you didn't realize were even there. That's okay. And know that we don't need to either act out or act in as uh, people sometimes say. So we might feel angry, but that doesn't mean that we need to like scream and punch the wall. It doesn't mean that we need to stuff our feelings down and pretend everything's fine. We can just harness the skill of awareness and allow things to just be. It's tough. <laughs> I get that. Um, so I hope that I give you sort of a process uh, and an environment in which things can bubble up or things can move through you. And hopefully at the end of this, maybe we'll be feeling a little bit lighter. Um, this brings me to um, an important sort of question that we could have in our minds. What is your goal for this session? Um, you might like to even write that down before you begin. Um, me, a big goal for my working on forgiveness is that I want to take the sting out of things. So I don't know if that's helpful for you. Often um, we need to forgive or we feel drawn to forgive because someone's hurt us, right? And then um, I'm quoting Marianne Williamson. She says that our pain doesn't come from what's done to us. It comes from when we shut our hearts to the person or event or whatever it was. Sometimes that our, that's ourselves. The pain comes from when we shut our hearts to something. Um, and I wanna take a little bit of the sting out of that pain. So that's often my personal goal. I wanna feel more peaceful. I wanna stop thinking about it so much. Um, so it might be helpful if you think in mind, or if you have in mind what your goal is for doing this forgiveness work. And you could have a big G goal in a perfect world, what would happen? And then a small G goal, what you'd like to have happen by the end of the session or more short term. Um, another question for curiosity that you might like to think about or write down, what emotions are under your desire to forgive? So I already named anger, hurt, um, often there's fear, loss, grief, um, something that we don't often think about because it's not quite an emotion is our sense of identity. So if part of my core identity is that I'm a very good yoga teacher and somebody puts me down, they've hurt my core identity, right? That I think, no, I'm a good yoga teacher. Why did they put me down for my yoga skills? So that I'm healing more of a, a wound of my identity than a wound of my emotions, if that makes sense because we like to see ourselves in a certain way. This may even be your goal for our practice today. I like to see myself as a peaceful person. I hope something here is helping so far. Um, what else can I say? That we don't have to force it. Um, we're not condoning what has been done. And I actually think an important part of forgiveness is to allow for the hurt to happen. So if someone is 
currently hurting you at this moment. You don't need to forgive them right now. If someone hurt you five minutes ago, earlier today, it's okay to let those emotions kind of rattle around in you. And then when you're ready, you feel like you can sort of tackle that kind of need for forgiveness. Perfect. We don't need to force it. We're not condoning it. We're not saying it's okay. Also important too, if someone has hurt us or we need to tend to ourselves, that's important information, right? So um, again, I'm gonna quote Marianne Williamson, sometimes no is a loving answer. So if someone has done something to you or you've done something to yourself, let's use a something to ourselves example. If I am upset with myself because I ate the entire chocolate cake and it gave me a tummy ache and I'm allergic to chocolate, no can still be a loving answer. Gwendolyn, I love you, but no, you cannot keep eating chocolate cake, right? So we can still have healthy boundaries and we can still tend to ourselves. Um, I also think this big buzzword, you know, self-care. These practices of forgiveness are part of a lifestyle of self-care, of self-maintenance. So we're not being self-indulgent by going, oh, I need to forgive. We're just taking care of ourselves, right? We're allowing our emotions to pass through us. We're emotional beings. I probably don't need to convince you of that. If you're here, you probably believe that already. So this just helps the same way we would take a shower to wash our hair. We are gonna do a forgiveness practice to wash our emotions. We're gonna let the stuff we don't want go down the drain and we're gonna keep everything that we do want. Okay, I think that is my whole preamble except for our essential oil mix. So I have in our diffuser here today, I went seasonal. So any kind of fir woodsy tree blend can be grounding to help keep us in our bodies. We wanna stay in our bodies, right? Sometimes we get wrapped up in our memories. Oh, but then she said this, and then I said that. And I wish I'd said our fir trees and our trees can help keep us in our bodies in the present moment. December, I chose pine. You might like cedar wood, Siberian fir, something else like that. Um, rose is always my favorite. Rose is great. It's so wonderful. It's very high vibe as people always like throw that around. What does that mean? It means the energetic properties of rose relate to our positive emotions. I always think of things that are low vibe are things that are like rotting, garbage, processed food. We don't want to be in that realm. We want to be in that beautiful, lovely, rosy realm. Uh, any other florals that you might have, geranium, lavender, and you may be so lucky as to have a pre-made forgiveness blend at home. Perfect. We can use that too. Okay. We're going to start with tapping. So before we start with tapping, let's just kind of center ourselves for a moment. You may like to close your eyes. Sit up tall, take a deep breath, roll those shoulders. I just threw a ton of information at you. Might even like to shake our heads or do some other kind of movement to reset. What did I say about being in our bodies? So we can let go of past or future, noticing how we are feeling right now in this very moment. knowing that however you're feeling is totally fine. You may like to name whatever emotion comes up and there's no limit to the number of feelings you can have at one time. You may have a real mixed bag of emotions right now. tapping practice to give your emotions an intensity on a scale of one to 10. So maybe I'm feeling a little tender or fragile, about a six. So naming your emotions and then rating their intensity. And if you're not quite sure how you're feeling or how intense that feeling is, you can't put your finger on it, you might just in your own mind call it this 
feeling. Or if you're feeling it in your body, you might even call it this sensation. And then on a scale of one to 10, let's see if we can rate our need for forgiveness. So something's a little bit bothersome for me, but I can mostly live my life without thinking about it. I might rate that as a two. But if I cannot stop thinking about it, I need to forgive this person so badly because it's taking up so much of my time and I'm recycling feelings of hurt, I might put that up closer to an eight or a nine. So picking a number for the intensity of your need to forgive. It doesn't matter what numbers or feelings we've chosen. We'll put that on the back burner for now. Let's go ahead and open the eyes if they're closed. And we'll start tapping. Let's start on our karate chop point. If you've never done tapping, monkey see, monkey do, follow me. We're gonna tap and we're gonna repeat some affirmations. You can simply just listen to me or repeat in your head or out loud. Even though I desperately need to forgive, I'm okay. Even though I have closed my heart, I'm safe right now. Even though I really, really want to forgive, I'm still a good person. Okay, let's go through our tapping points. You may have different ones than me. The top of the head. I so desperately want to forgive. Inside of the eyebrow. I so badly need to forgive. Outside of the eye. But I have been hurt. Under the eye on the cheekbone. I have been wronged. Under the nose. There has been an injustice. On the chin. It's just not right. And let's tap our collarbones. We can do both. I do not feel good about this. And today we'll use our liver point. So go ahead and you tap your right side. And I am so angry. You can fill in another emotion if that works for you, but we're tapping on our liver because that is our anger point. And maybe we wanna say it loudly a few more times. I am really, really angry. Maybe you have a different word for it. I am irked. I'm enraged. We can name that emotion. We can tap on our liver. I am super duper upset. And then under the arm. And I really want this feeling to change. Let's go back to our tapping points. Again, you may choose different ones than me. That's okay. I would like to feel differently about this. I would love to never think about it again. I wish I could open my heart. I wish other people were nicer to me. And I wish I were nicer to myself. I would love to feel peaceful. I would love to feel at ease. I just wish this didn't bother me. I'll give you the opportunity again. We can tap our liver point on your right side. Fill it in for yourself, but I am just feeling so
and then for the arm. And again, fill it in for yourself, but I wish that I could feel I wish that I could feel light and lifted. I am opening myself to making peace with what has happened. And I'm bringing my awareness to the present moment. I'm feeling my feet. I'm feeling my legs. I'm feeling my torso. I'm feeling my arms. Feeling my neck and shoulders. And I'm feeling my head. I'm feeling my whole body in the present moment, taking each moment as it comes. I am opening myself up to forgiveness. There have been wrongdoings but I'm okay right now. Maybe I can be okay for this very second. I deserve to feel pretty good. I'm a good person. pretty hard. I'm doing my best. Maybe I can be ready to release old hurts. Fill it in again for yourself. And now I'm feeling And my ultimate goal is to feel and we're not quite done tapping. Let's do a little bit more. We're gonna cross our hands and tap one side and then the other. So you may notice during tapping, all sorts of stuff comes up. The idea is that our nervous system is, I don't know, I like to picture it being kind of jangled around. <laughs> so there's a little bit of uh, active engagement on our part, but also some relaxation as we tap. Um, and one of my favorite lines is, I am peacefully engaged with life. So I feel like when we tap, we have a little bit more peaceful engagement. But as part of that process, often people yawn, uh, they tear up even with no emotions related to their tears, they may cry, all sorts of stuff might happen. Uh, you might feel the noise to sort of shake out and make weird noises, let it out. Whatever wants to come out, let it out. And then the idea with this cross body tapping is again that it is good for our nervous system. Cross body stuff is pretty darn good for our brain and our body and how they connect to one another. We're gonna do the same thing. I'll give us a couple more options for this. We'll take our hands to our thighs. Um, and depending on the length of your arms, you might like to bend the elbows or not. But we're gonna press one side and then the other. So this can be done, of course, seated in a chair or um, sitting on the floor like I'm doing. You can even do it standing, kind of um, hinging forward, if that makes sense. Standing up with the knees bent, leaning forward. So if you really like the tapping, feel free to keep doing that. If you really like 
the cross body. Feel free to keep doing that. I will give us one more option that we can do. And this one can also be done lying down, maybe even before you go to bed at night or at the end of any yoga practice. All right, so it requires a little bit of shoulder mobility. We can do one arm or both. Ideally, it's supposed to be done with our hands interlaced. We're also thinking, we're thinking our uh, liver point for anger from traditional Chinese medicine. Now we're into our lung point for grief and releasing emotions. So we are opening our hearts, opening across um, our lung points. We can let the weight of our head rest back into our hands. So we have a little bit of pressure on the muscles that connect to the back of the skull. And we're going to slowly move our eyes from side to side, um, not as quickly as we did with our uh, tapping and our pressing. Okay, so let the head rest back. And for about 20 seconds, we're going to turn the eyes just to one side, doesn't matter what. So right or left, we'll turn all the way over, kind of letting the eyes rest to the side. So we're not forcing them to the side. A little bit of engagement, a little bit of relaxation. making sure we're still breathing. And any of this cross body stuff, you may have the same reaction as in our tapping that you need to move, yawn, sigh, cry, whatever it may be. Okay, we'll come back through center. Ugh. Might need to reset the shoulders. And of course, if that's painful, you don't have to do the other side. We can always do one arm or even just move the eyes without the weight of the head. But if we're doing okay, here we go. We'll let the weight of our head we'll rest back in our hands and we'll turn our eyes to the side. We're moving our eyes to the side without straining. We can think of it like resting our eyes to the side, making sure we're breathing. And whatever happens is perfectly okay. We're listening to our bodies and responding as necessary. Okay, come back through center. Oh, okay. Let's go ahead and reset. feel good to do some movements. Okay, we are going to get standing. If you like standing, feel free to stay seated for the rest of our time together. Yogi's choice. Here we go. Might need to, like I said, shake out our legs as well, shake out our arms, whatever that may be. And when you're ready, let's go ahead and come up to standing. So we'll start just standing in a basic standing position. Let's take a moment to take hand to heart, noticing the beating of our hearts, hand to belly. We'll do some soft belly breathing so we can relax our abdominal muscles, letting our hand kind of rest into our belly and our belly rest into our hand. And this helps us tune into our bodies, right? Maybe you can feel your heartbeat under your hand, feel your breath rate under your bottom hand. Pressing into the earth, standing tall, imagining we can grow a little taller. And then let's pull our belly away from our bottom hand. So we're engaging our abdominal muscles to pull in. So the idea is in yoga, when we activate our abdominal muscles, especially our upper abdominals, is that we are creating heat and fire to burn away whatever it is that we're thinking about. So we are thinking about burning away our unwanted emotions. So with each breath, we are expanding our ribs and then pulling in our abs. We're gonna hang on to this abdominal contraction. We're gonna breathe a little bit more into our ribs, a little bit more Pilates style. We can take our hands to the side of our ribs. Let's take a couple deep breaths in and out. All 
Okay, so we'll keep going with this breathing style. Ribs freely moving, abdominal muscles pulled in, and let's get those arms going. So we're gonna inhale up and just exhale hands through heart center. So we're circle sweeping. You have probably done this before. It's a great way to warm up our shoulders. And we can actually go the opposite direction as well. Inhaling up and exhaling through center. And let's notice the range of motion in our shoulders. We're gonna do some fairly aggressive movements um, for our shoulders. So if the shoulders are not feeling so great, we could always be doing a smaller range of motion, right? Or moving more slowly. And if shoulders are feeling good, okay, then we can really get into it. Okay, let's add on. So we're gonna inhale up and exhale. We're gonna take hands with eyes and sit down and back into a chair. This is for support, so maybe we don't need support. We wanna make a tight fist at the bottom. So like I said, we could be doing this seated, and then we're really strongly, firmly pressing into um, the feet, engaging the glutes, the muscle of your bum. One of the nice things actually about sitting in a chair is that you can feel when your glutes are engaged because you can feel them pressing into the chair, right? So we have a little bit of feedback from the chair. chair let's stay and I'll show you from the side we're gonna reach and pull and we can do a really short quick breath okay let's do three two last one let's reset and this time through, we're gonna hold, and we're gonna hold our breath, and we're gonna pump the arms quickly, okay? So we're gonna take an inhale, we're gonna sit into our chair, hold your inhale, and pump the arms quickly, like a child miming that they're downhill skiing, okay? So let's inhale up, hold your breath. Okay, let's go another five, four, three, two, one. Okay, we'll reset, circle sweep. Give us the opportunity to do that one more time. Breath holding isn't for everyone. No need to hold your breath. You could breathe evenly if you like. But if you like that, here we go. Big breath in. Hold your breath. All right, five. And release. Let's circle sweep those arms. Okay, we're gonna take our feet wide and we're gonna lunge side to side. So make sure that we have a crease in the front of the hips. So I have to sit my butt back so I get a crease in the hip and I'm bending one knee. I'll come tall through center and bend the other knee. So if you're sitting in a chair, you can simply take the legs wide and we can actually be sort of hinging forward side to side. Any approximation of this movement is good. So we're warming up our inner and outer thighs. This idea of having been hurt and closing our hearts, we close the body. So we wanna do some work to open the body. In this case, we're opening up around the pelvis. We will also open our hearts. for a landmark to help us with our hips. Let's do one more each way. We'll come back through center. We're gonna pivot on our feet. So we're gonna pivot one way, pivot the other way, a little bit uh, Tai Chi inspired. I like to picture that I have fireballs in my hand. So we're gonna shoot a fireball and then pull back. Like I said, we're gonna open our hearts. We're gonna really squeeze those back muscles. We're gonna exhale to shoot a fireball. Inhale through center, open our hearts. Pivoting on our feet. If the coordination is confusing, feel free to do it slowly like I'm doing now. Breathing whatever pace makes sense for you. We can be doing this quite quickly. So we're really pulling from our core center, creating heat, burning things up. So Yogi's Choice, fast or slow. Let's 
do. Go for another 10 more here. Maybe feeling hot. Shooting those fireballs. Okay, I've lost count. Let's make this our last one. We'll come back through center. Let's again circle swoop to reset. Okay, do remember we went up and out as well? We're gonna add Kali. She is, she's bad, as my teacher told me. She's kind of nasty, which we all have this inside ourselves, right? Sometimes we wanna let out that nasty energy. Kids have lots of fun with this one when I teach them. Um, we're doing lion's breath. Like the goddess Kali, she's sticking her tongue out. It's usually a bright red tongue in uh, any artwork that I've ever seen. So we're gonna inhale up. We're gonna stick out the tongue. You may like to imagine like a fire breathing dragon. We just created all this fire and now we're gonna exhale fire. Here we go, inhaling up. So doing it however feels good for you. If you feel silly, that's fine. If other people can hear you, you don't need to make noise while you're doing this. That's fine too. Feel free to really unleash it. You might like to make a sound or a roar. Maybe you have kids around that are doing this with you and everybody's having fun together. Perfect. Let's go for five more. Okay, this last one, let's go ahead and hold it. So we're open through our hearts. Let's pull back the elbows. I feel nice to loosen up the throat. We can straighten the arms and pull back the thumbs. So the idea is that our hips hold our emotional tension. So let's stretch our hips out. We're gonna pivot and turn, doesn't matter which way, whichever way makes the most sense for you. So now we have one leg in front and one leg behind. We're trying to stretch the hip of the back leg. So you might like this with your foot flat. Front knee bent or straight. You might like to tuck the toes. This is actually really nice to do in a chair. You kind of turn sideways in the chair. The bent leg, that butt cheek will still be on the chair and the other one will kind of be off. And it's a nice one to do because your muscles don't have to work to hold you though. Here we're getting an active stretch. If you are on a chair turned sideways, a great one to do at your desk in the middle of the day if you have a desk job or sit around a lot because we can just release and let the hip kind of do its thing. Let's go ahead and take it to the other side. Pivoting, whichever leg is in the back, that's the one we're getting stretched in the front of the hip. Might like to tuck the hip, drop the knee. Sometimes it takes a little coaxing to get that engagement. to help our hearts feel protected and safe and also kind of lower this energy and heat that we've worked up. You might like to do quite a wide-legged forward fold, whichever your preference is. I'll show us how to do a narrow-legged forward fold. We're going to reach our hands back. We can interlace in behind or just kind of shoot those fireballs towards one another, aiming our hands together. And from here, we can bend our knees and let our belly rest on our thighs. There's a lot of benefit to letting the body rest on the body. So our belly's touching our thighs, we're touching body with the body. Maybe feeling our breath here. Noticing with our inhale, belly rests against thighs. We can give our heads a little shake and nod. to release we can come down into maybe we like downward facing dog maybe we 
like a child's pose. But again, these lowering poses are supposed to lower our energy and our emotions as well. So if this feels nice and safe and comfortable for you, perfect. If you feel you still have a little too much flighty energy, we could actually kind of burn up some of that energy with a back bend instead. So if that's you, sit tight, we'll do that in just one second. If we love child's pose, maybe we're shaking the hips off, swaying side to side, letting the forehead rest or turning the head side to side. is your totally favorite pose in the world, feel free to stay. We are going to do a variation of camel. I'll show us a lot of variations. Don't let me overwhelm you. Any of them is fine. The same kind of energetic quality that we are opening our hearts, feeling strong in our backs. If you feel really overwhelmed or vulnerable by this, you could come into a neutral position or child's pose like we just did. So seated, we could be reaching back as we did before. If you are in a chair, you can hold on to any part of the chair. That's a really nice way to do it. We could pull the hands away away from one another while gripping the chair. We can interlace our hands. If you're okay kneeling, we could be okay kneeling. Toes tucked or feet flat. And some of us may like a really deep camel walking the hands down the back of the legs. That's fine too. Chin can be tucked or slightly lifted, but we don't really want to lift more than a fist away from the chest for the safety of our neck. We want these muscles in the back of the neck to be engaged, just like the muscles down either side of the spine in the back. We're gonna take a breath in and out. to release, we might like child's pose again, or maybe we are ready to come to a seated position. Taking a moment to reset, so you might have to, oh, like we've been doing, get some movements going. Might like to do a little side to side. help us to take a deeper breath since we're stretching the rib cage, which hopefully is expanding while we're breathing. And we can reach forward and tuck the chin. So these are just suggestions after all of that movement that we've already done. Please let your body be your guide. You might like to be doing something a little different. Lifting the heart once more. Okay, and then when we're ready, just come to a comfortable seated position, whatever comfortable means for you. We're gonna do Karuna Mudra. So this is a mudra for forgiveness. Um, I don't know which hand should be on top if there's any specific um, guidance for that, but here's what I think. The top hand should be the dominant energy that we're looking for. So I think of um, forgiveness as being more of a yin energy, which means that your left hand should go on top. So this is softening, soothing, allowing, releasing, cooling. I think that initial wound, just like a, like a cut, a physical cut in real life, it gets hot, it gets red. Often people refer to wounds as looking angry. I think that is more um, our yang or yang energy. So we want that energy to come down. We're gonna put the right hand on the bottom and the left hand on top. So just a little cup in each hand. And then the right hand is going to kind of cup on top of the left, the left hand is on top. Let's keep our hands this idea of peaceful engagement. So they're soft, but still holding that gentle cupped shape. And this mudra represents our ability to soften and forgive. Maybe our hearts are already feeling a little lighter or more healed at this point. And we know that whatever we practice or whatever we bring our awareness to grows stronger. So option to close the eyes here. You don't have to close the eyes, but if it helps you to tune in, bringing your awareness to anything that already feels maybe a little better than when we first started. 
if we're having positive emotions, feeling safe, soft, maybe you're already feeling forgiving. Feeling compassionate towards ourselves. And then letting your awareness rest on any kind of positive or even neutral feeling that you're having. And if nothing comes up, that's okay too. like this as long as you like and we'll do a tonglen meditation so this takes a little bit of time if the hands get tired we could always rest them we'll do a nature visualization with tonglen so tonglen allows us to feel our feelings we don't have to push them away or make them into something else and we can just notice any negative feelings we're having right now and picture them as a little rain cloud. You may picture this rain cloud somewhere in your body or in your mind. And we may imagine breathing into this rain cloud, acknowledging our heavy, dark, rainy, maybe kind of sad feelings, and just letting them exist. Knowing that just like the weather, Feelings will come and go. Feelings always change. The weather always changes. And once you've acknowledged these feelings, we can just let them sit in this dark rain cloud. Or you may like to imagine an image something else, maybe an umbrella to protect you from the rain, raincoat, rain boots, maybe the sun starts to come through the clouds and the clouds part, or even just it's still gray and rainy, but the rain is beginning to let up. going through a little bit of a tough time or you know that there's a rain cloud in their life as well. You can picture that rain cloud and hold it in your heart for them. If no one comes to mind, that's okay. Some of my students tell me they like to use me since obviously I'm top of mind and that's okay. Or it could even be a stranger that you passed on the street today knowing that everyone is going through their own kind of troubles. Holding that rain cloud in your heart, acknowledging that hurt and sadness are out there. And we can just leave it there. Or you may like to imagine some sort of protection from the rain. to our liver point and our lung point. So we can give ourselves a hug. We're gonna compress. So you can take your left hand on top of your uh, right side of your ribs. And we're gonna pay a little attention to our liver point, giving ourselves a hug. And we're hugging ourselves, maybe feeling safe and cozy. And then let's open up, stretching across our lung line, maybe feeling lifted, feeling like we can take a deep breath. Let's do that a couple more times here, giving ourselves a hug, and an opening. Knowing that we don't have to 
feel any particular way. Maybe feeling like we're under a rain cloud, and that's okay. All right, yogi's choice, we can pause in this safe, protected, closed position, or we can pause in this open position. Whichever one feels right, doesn't need to make sense. We don't have to have a reason for it. Let's just intuitively stay in one of these poses for a couple of extra breaths. And then I'll give us some time here. I'll leave some extra music at the end of this video. We can stay in a seated meditation. Maybe we like hand on heart, hand on belly. We may like to go back to our Karuna Mudra of forgiveness.